right now. I was just talking to this brother earlier, right? Hey, look, we don't know them brothers from Adam. I never met them brothers. Hey, look, I don't care where you from. I don't care what set you claim. God said, knowing that we Israelites, we all we the same nationality of people, I got to love you as I love myself. Now, if we did that, would we be fighting amongst each other? Would it be gang wars amongst each other? Would we be killing each other? Would we be selling drugs to each other, or would we prosper? We would be prospering. Give me uh, Psalms 133. Keep your thumb there, right? So this is the whole message of the Bible. Remember, like I, like I told my brother here, this book is a book of prophecies for a people, a book of laws for a people, right? A book of judgments for a people. And it was taken from that people and given to everybody to share. That's not fair. Uh, if, your, if your dad left you a, a million dollars, right? He leave you a million dollars, and he write on it, this is for my son, right? And you lost that paper. And somebody found it and tore your name off of it. And now he's coming to claim your million dollars. Is that fair? Your dad worked all his life to, to save you that million dollars. That's what happened to the Bible. This is for you. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 133 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In what? In unity. God said, look how beautiful it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Where do we dwell together in? Neighborhoods. We in SAC, we throw that up. We uh we in Oakland, we throw that up. We in Richmond, we throw that up. He said, What if in all those cities y'all dwell together in unity? How come how come is division between North SAC, South SAC? Right? Why the manners in the heights funking? Why is Oak Park and G Parkway funking? God said unity. He said, I don't care about none of that. Y'all supposed to y'all supposed to unite on something. And what we're supposed to unite on is the Bible, knowing right. our national. We could we could we could we could bang that. You know what I'm saying? Let's bang Israel. That's who we are. Right. What do Israel wear? What are we supposed to wear? Give me a uh, number uh, uh, 1538. Right? So how do, you, how do you represent you Israel, knowing that you're the Israelites? I'm going to show you because that's what the brothers got on. Right? Watch this. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak to that people that lost their nationality, don't know their heritage, went into slavery on slave ships, so on and so forth. Read on. And bid them. Command them. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generations. Now I'm a, he said, make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Let's see what they for, read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Don't you see all the brothers doing that? They got fringes on border of blue. What the bloods do? They write the, the rag on the right side, just like the bloods tell them to do. Crips do it on the, on the left side, just like, but guess what? God said, put this on. Represent me, right? Read on. And it shall be unto you uh -huh. for a friend yep. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord uh -huh. and do them. Right. And that ye seek not after your own heart. Don't go after your own mind. He said, remember the commandments and don't, don't, don't change it according to your own mind. Say, I don't think God really meant that. God mean what he mean, right? Read on. Seek not after your own heart uh -huh. and your own eyes, yep. after which you to go a whore. Uh -huh. So follow, follow God's playbook. Like he told you, he, hey, look, if God say, look, we in a huddle, God say, look, I'm going to have you go up, and then you're going you're gonna to swing out right, boom, it's going to be a touchdown for sure. Right? He, and we hike the ball, and you just sit there in the flat. Touchdown ain't going to happen because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Exactly, right? So now give me 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. I'm going to show you some love now. And when, when, when you get some love, real love, mostly we ain't never experienced no real love. We, all we experience is hate, hate, hate. You know what I'm saying? So when we get some love, we take it as hate. Whether you hate me or not, I'm about to show you some love. Watch this. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Your body is the temple of the living God. The temple is where he lived. He dwell in you, right? Read on. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you dwell in you. He live inside you. Read. If any man defile the temple of God. If any man defile that temple where God live, your, which your body is, if you defile it, meaning destroy it, you dirty it up. Read. Him shall God destroy. God gonna destroy you, right? So my man, he's smoking a cigarette right now. Hey, guess what? I used to smoke cigarettes. Newport shorts. That was my thing. I, I smoke, I smoke uh, maybe a pack and a half a day. That's with me. When I wake up in the morning, I got to smoke a cigarette. When I have sex, I got to smoke a cigarette. When I get in the car, I got to smoke a cigarette. When I eat, I got to smoke a cigarette. That was my pattern. You see what I'm saying? So I ain't saying, I ain't telling you nothing that I ain't never did, right? 
But now I'm gonna show you the love and say, if I love you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rebuke you and correct you, right? Put the cigarette out. It's killing you. It said, it said on the box. It says it's gonna kill you. Guess what? He don't, the white man don't like when you're strong. He don't want you strong. He wants you smoking them. He hate when you work out and get muscles. You know what I'm saying? He hate. Exactly. How would I get in touch with y'all? Like, how would I? Oh, uh, you got your flyer? Yeah. Look on the back of it. It's a number back there. Hey, before you go, let me give him a script. Please. No, you getting it right back. Don't go nowhere. I'm serious. Uh, so he was going over how you love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? I'm going to give you some love, brother, before you get up out of here. Give me 2 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 5. Because guess what? The way that we are right now, society is okay with that. They okay with, with us looking crazy. They okay with us looking anything but what we're supposed to be. And that's glorious, right? So let me get this to you because don't nobody, ain't nobody going to tell you this. A, a normal person ain't going to tell you this off of the jump. But somebody that actually cares for you, your soul, and your spirit, they're going to tell you this. Read that. 2 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 5. When they told it unto David, uh -huh. he sent to meet them uh -huh. because the men were greatly ashamed. The men were greatly ashamed. Bring that out. Bring that out. Bring Why that were they greatly ashamed? Read. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown. Because their beards were gone, they were greatly ashamed. Come on. And then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stink before David, uh -huh. the children of Ammon sit and hired the sit. Verse go 4. Verse 4. Go up to verse 4. We missed it. That's, that's watch this though. Come on. Wherefore, Hanan to David's servant and shaved off the one half of their beards. So he shaved off a half of their beard, meaning they shaved it. What, what does that mean? That means our beards are glorious unto us. That's why everybody got them. Come on. And cut off their garments. Whoa, in the and he cut off their garments. What's their garments? No, the garments. The garments is your clothing. Your clothing. They cut off their. They cut off their garments. Where they cut their garments off at? In the middle. In the middle. We're at the middle. Even to their buttocks. He cut their garments right all up in here, so people can see their asses. Watch this. Come on. And sent them away. And then he sent them away after that. Watch what the Bible say that they were worth. What, 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 what your beard going and your ass showing is called. When they told it unto David, uh -huh. he sent to meet them. Because the men were greatly ashamed. They were greatly ashamed that their beards were showing. And, I mean, that their beards was going and their asses were showing. Now we walk around with our pants down like it's a, like it's a fashion. Bro, that's, that's shameful. It's shameful for another man to be able to see your behind, bro. Pull your pants up. Pull your pants up, and that's true love. That's what true love is. True love is telling a, a, a young man, a, a, a young man telling another young man, brother, you look crazy out here. You look shameful out here. Pull your damn pants up. And ain't nobody going to do that to you because look at us. Look at us. We, 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 everybody fears us. But guess what? I love my people. And I'm going to tell you what God said before anything. God said that you are a king, bro. You, are, you were built to be a God. Right. But you die like a man because you don't keep his commandments. Right. That's what happens. No. Big Jew here. Yep. And this is what we said. Look in this little bit of time, right? In this little bit of time we've been here, how much we done cleaned each other up. You know what I'm saying? Now you know you can't hate your brother in your heart. I know the same thing. Me and you ain't never going to fight. Me and you ain't never, ever, ever going to fight. What are we supposed to do if me and you have a problem? What you think? But is that what happened in the neighborhood? Because they're not following God's playbook. Give me uh, Matthew 18, 15. Let me show you something, right? If every man, if every man followed God's playbook, what would happen to the beef and the drama and all that stuff that caused all these murders, caused all this fighting? Watch this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Uh -huh. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. If I offend you, right? I trespass against you. I do something wrong to you. Let's say like, like, um... Uh, I come in your house, I don't take off uh, my shoes. That's your house rule. And I come in there anyway on accident. I didn't even trip, right? And I offended you. What you supposed to do, Reed? Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Oh, so first and foremost, you supposed to come talk to me alone, right? Now, in the neighborhood, is that what happened? Something happened to, uh, especially with the sisters, right? If a uh, sister do something wrong to you, right? Or you do something wrong to a sister. Do she come talk to you alone or do she go tell her friends first? Right, they're going to tell their friends first. And now this group is talking about it. And now they're looking at you shady. This group looking at you shady. You done told your friends. You know what I'm saying? What happened? You told your folks. And now we're looking at them shady. Now is this group 
against this group instead of two men talking it out and handling their business. You see how easy that is? We follow God's playbook in the strife and envy cease, right? Read on. If he shall hear thee, uh -huh. thou Start hast get. Huh? Start from the top. From the, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. You got a brother that trespass against you. You got a sister that trespass against you. Read. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. You, got, you go talk to that brother. Tell him what they did. You and him alone. You and her alone. Right? That way it don't spread. Read. If he shall hear thee. If they hear where you coming from. If they feel where you coming from. Read. Thou hast gained thy brother. What have you done? Thou hast gained thy brother. So, but guess what? If I don't do this, I create an enemy. But if I come chop it up with you, I gain a brother. I, I Now I know how to move around. I know you don't play that. Like, uh... In high school, a lot of the folks, uh, they used to call each other the B word. Brothers be doing that. My group of friends, we didn't play that. We don't call each other. really don't get down like that, right? If he loved me, he gonna be like, you know what? I didn't know that you did, took it like that, so I won't do that with you again. All right, family, boom. And I didn't gain the brother. He still can go play like that with his folks, but when he come around me, we, just, we respect each other. Right. We respect right. each other. You right. see that? Yes, sir. Come get with us. Come get with us. Ah, I gotta get some correction for your, uh, for your real, real quick, okay? This for you. This love for you too. Okay. Give me First Timothy two and nine as y'all as y'all roll. Cause your 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 uh your husband he just corrected. So he did a lot of stuff to correct himself. I mean he gonna change. He gonna love his. When we read that to him, he gonna love his wife uh like his own body. You know what I'm saying? He gonna honor his wife so on and so forth. He gonna he gonna change. He one of them strong ones. You know what I'm saying? So now this revolutionary man gonna need a revolutionary woman, or it ain't gonna work, right? So as he changes, let's see if you will change. Watch this. First Timothy chapter two and verse nine. Uh -huh. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now for women, this is a law for women. Adorn themselves in modest apparel. What does it mean, modest? What does that mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now look, y'all, y'all great. I, I, I pray to the Lord that y'all come because y'all gonna clean each other up. We gonna, we gonna be a prosperous day. We gonna raise great kids. We gonna, we gonna run some strong ass kids. Our right. kids don't know how to fight, but they ain't gonna fight each other. You right. know what I'm saying? Our kids gonna get married, but we ain't gonna. We, you would want my son to marry your daughter. You know what I'm saying? I would want your son to marry. Don't 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 make my daughter no whore. And guess what? We sitting back watching the grandkids. Me and you, a family. We didn't. We we were strangers. Now we a family because our kids got. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's supposed to be like. My brother pulled his pants up. My brother threw a cigarette out. My sister covered up her navel. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna be prosperous. I wanna see y'all. Right? Read on. With shamefacedness uh -huh. and sobriety. Shameface mean uh, kind of shy and reserved. Not all of it. Oh, nigga, you do this, nigga, nigga, this, that. That's not a woman of God. Even and, and if we was that, now we can change. You know what I'm saying? Read on. Not with braided hair uh -huh. or gold or pearls uh -huh. or costly array, right. but which cometh woman, man professing woman professing godliness. Right. Professing God in First Peter three and one, right? So this for the sister, this for the husband. I gotta leave y'all with this. I know y'all y'all got a busy day. I can't read you the whole Bible. We'll be here for hours and hours, right? But I gotta get some some points of what I can see, right? It's gonna help clean y'all up. Watch this. First Peter chapter three and verse one. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye wives. Wives, this your husband right here. Y'all, he said he gonna marry you, right? Y'all go get that thing done and be right with God, right? Read on. Be in subjection to your own husband. That's what women don't like. They don't like that, being subjection to my husband. Because society teaches the women, you running things, right? And you so independent, and to help you get independent, I'll give you welfare, but your, your husband got to be out the house. You know what I'm saying? This is why we don't get married. We're going to lose all our benefits, our state benefits. You know what I'm saying? Now we think we're independent, but you actually dependent on the white man. 
You see that? So in order to fix that, it say why? Be in subjection to your husband. This your husband, whatever he say, go. Long, long as long as he ain't teaching, he ain't, he ain't telling you to go sell your. You know what I'm saying? He ain't telling you nothing ungodly. If he's saying this is how we gonna run the house, babe, that's how we gonna run it. He can he can listen to you. you got some opinions, cool. You gonna because sometimes the sisters they be having some good ass ideas. My wife's better than me with credit and stuff. So when it comes to that, I listen to her. You know, but at the final judgment, I get to say. You know what I'm saying? So read what you got. Be in subjection to your own husbands. Uh -huh. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wise. So they can hear how you talk. You used to talk rash. You used to talk like this. But they see how you change. They say, let me see what she into. Let me get into that too. We raise up the nation just by your actions. Read on. While they behold your test. Conversation. Chase conversation. We ain't talking gossip. We ain't talking about this B said this, this B said that. I'll ride in the. This. We not no more like that. Read. Coupled with fear. Uh huh. Read on. Who's adorning? What you put on. Let it not be that outward adorning. He said the outward adorning. Don't let that be the most beautiful thing on you. Read. Of plaiting the hair. Plaiting the hair. That's the braids. Don't let that be the most beautiful thing on you. Read. And of wearing of gold. The bracelets and all that. The earrings. Don't let that be the most beautiful thing. Read. Or of putting on of apparel. Uh -huh. Don't let your clothing be the most beautiful thing on you, read. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let this be the most beautiful thing on you. If this the most beautiful thing on you, ain't you ain't like no other man. You know what I'm saying? That's hard to find. A sister with one of these on her shoulders. You know what I'm saying? But now, instead of, instead of attracting a husband with this, we go out and attract the husband with this, with this. We go out and attract the woman with this with the cars and the spinning ring. That's wrong with God. He said, let this be the most beautiful thing on you. Read. Even the, but in that which is not corruptible, uh -huh. even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. He said, what you supposed to put on? The ornament, the ornament you're supposed to be wearing is a meek and quiet spirit to your husband. Because look at this. This is, what, this is what women don't know. Don't nobody like your husband. When you go to work, the boss don't like him. You know what I'm saying? He got to fight everybody. Everybody think he a no good nigga. And then when he come home, he got to fight you too. At home, that's supposed to be your place of peace. Right. That's supposed to be your place of peace where everything all good. I done fought the world all week. And I come home, I, I need some peace from my wife. But if I got to fight my wife, the, the war never stops. I never get a break. I go crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened. But if you're a pillar of the rest of your husband, he, that's the secret that women don't know, man. If you if you good to your husband, he'll give you the world. He'll fight a giant for you. You know what I'm saying? That's the secret that it, that, that they don't know. You know what I'm saying? You re read verse 7 for my brother. 7. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Now, on the flip side, since you got that rulership of your wife, he said, don't be no nigga. Dwell with her according to knowledge. Right? The knowledge is this Bible. Treat her right. Right? Read on. Giving honor unto the wife. What are we supposed to do to the wife? Giving honor unto the wife. Don't hit the wife. Giving honor unto the wife. Don't cuss the wife out. Call her stupid. Giving honor unto the wife. Now you see how we're supposed to move with each other? You're supposed to respect this brother. Being subject to him. And then on you, and you got that. Now give honor to your wife for being that kind of sister. You know what I'm saying? Read on. As unto the weaker vessel. Knowing that she the weaker vessel. She ain't never going to be able to lift as much as you. She ain't never going to be able to fix a car like you. You know what I'm saying? You the stronger one. Right? Read on. And as being heirs together. We heirs together. We're going to get the kingdom together. We get rulership together. You see that? Read. Of the grace of life, uh -huh. that your prayers be not hindered. And if y'all not moving like that, if you're not in subjection to him, if you're not moving right with her, y'all prayers getting hindered. Y'all being cursed. God, like, no, nah, I ain't respecting that. Look how they dealing with each other. Uh, Leviticus, uh, Sirach 25 and 1. I know y'all got to go. I'm going to leave y'all with this one, all right? Watch this. Watch this. Sirach. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 1. Uh -huh. In three things I was beautified. This is three things God think is beautiful. Watch this. And stood up beautiful both before God and man. Uh -huh. The unity of brethren. The first thing he said, the unity of brethren. So guess what? Us dwelling together, if, let's say this is where me and you from. Me and you getting along, our kids getting along, our folks getting along, and, and ain't no gang violence here. God loved that. But that's not what we're seeing around here, right? The unity of brethren is number one. Read. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors is the children of your people. Remember your neighbors? So the people in your immediate neighborhood and your people outside, you still love them too. He said, I love that. Read. A man and a wife that agree together. He said, a man and a wife that agree together. Unity of brethren, he loved that. The love of his people, he loved that. 
and unity of uh, man and wife that agree together, he loved that. So what we gonna agree on? We gonna agree on everything God say. You subjection to him? Cool. You agree on that? I agree on that. We do this. You see what I'm saying? Hey, me honor you. Don't disrespect you, so on and so forth. Okay, cool. We do that. He loved that thing. You see that? Y'all need to go get married right away. When it right. say uh, when it say uh, whoremongers and adulterers, God gonna judge. Right now, y'all have missed a whoremonger. You know what I'm saying? Your bed is defiled. But all you gotta do to fix it, go get your paperwork. Um, I talked to a brother at work the other day. Uh, he said, uh, I, I'm about to get married. I said, well, uh, why you ain't been married yet? He been with his wife eight years. Eight whole years, they ain't been married, right? And I said, what's holding you back? He said, man, I gotta get a ring. Ain't no ring in the Bible. So we hold it back because we waiting for a, for a $10,000, you know what I'm saying, ring. You ain't gotta have that. What about that uh, wedding, that big old wedding? You ain't gotta have that. God, only thing you need for your, give me that Tobit 4. Or 714, only thing you need is this. And you can go do this right away. You can do this tomorrow and be right with God. Right? Guess what? Guess what? If y'all really down for each other, man, let's do the damn thing. What we playing with? How long y'all been together? Come on, man. Come on, man. All the, all the drama that happened in y'all relationship, if y'all did any cheating or whatever, that's done. Because y'all knew now. Yeah, right away. Right away. Read what you got. Tobit chapter 7, verse 14. Uh -huh. And called Edna his wife yep. and took paper and did write an instrument of covenant yep. and sealed it. Go get your marriage papers. Right. That's what God said. My man. Yeah, yeah. Man, I got kids. See, how, how old y'all kids? I got kids. Yeah, Casey Hunt is one. My youngest son is one. He's ready to turn two at the end of this month. Yep. My oldest boy is eight. My middle boy is all praises. I got a 10 year old. I got an 8 year old. I got a 2 year old. Let's, let's raise our kids. Let's take this over. Excuse my language. Let's take this world over. Let's do what God said. Yep. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community.